Welcome to another episode of ABH Anywhere But Here. We've come to stay at the lovely town of Buchan. We're going to be looking at the Buchan Caves. We're going for a tour tomorrow. Uh, the next day we're going to go find some waterfalls and some other bits and pieces. But I just wanted to do a quick show around where we are. We're actually at our first hip camp. I'll put in a little thing down below here of what it's actually called. It's approximately $25 a night. Um, it's on a private property, obviously, but this is the views we've got. Like, it is absolutely stunning. And of course, our setup. Rob's gone up the back and he's speaking to the owners. Let's see if we can. Hi. There he is. So you've been finished talking to the neighbours? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What'd you find out? Um, there's a, literally a tap just on the other side of that. Oh. So if I can actually get a reducer, I can run the hoses straight up to that and we can have hot showers without having to worry about filling the bottles. Oh, so where do we get one of them from? <clears throat> oh, look, I, might, I might have one in my bits and pieces drawer, but if not, we might have to get one at a hardware store, which will be in a, like a close, close to town. Mm. Which won't be too bad. It'll be mm. easy to get. Then you can finally do a review of our kick-ass hot water si service system. What do you want to call it? That oh, the review on the kick-ass. Yeah, you might yeah. actually be able to do it. And then I might actually be able to have more than a quick shower. We worked it out if we used our 20-litre drums. The water jerrys? Yeah, drums. A minute and a half per, per bottle. Yeah, so that, that would mean a minute and a half each for a shower. But I put it down as that I had three minutes for a shower. You yeah, had yeah. None. And I get the dregs. <laughs> um, we've got no phone reception, no TV reception, and did you work out what the owner's name is? Yeah, Peter. Peter has said that Peter it is best to book at the pub for dinner tonight, so we're going to go for a drive into town, which is literally just there. Yeah, um, it's literally like 60 seconds see away. See if there's a cafe or something and see if we can get something for lunch and book yep. dinner. Pretty much. So, but this, this hip camp is... Well, the destination, like where it is, it's absolutely amazing. Yeah. The view that we've got out the front of our caravan and to the side, it's just beautiful. Well, I'm going to get some drone footage soon, so we'll see how we go. I know Sunday we've got really, really good weather, so I might even wait till then. That way I can get a, a really good view of everything. There's a couple of cows screaming down there early. I think one of them was yelling at her kids. Yeah. They obviously haven't cleaned their room or picked up their dishes. Nah, well so far we've seen three nags. We've got two out the front and this one right here. <laughs> um, one thing we were warned about being here is not to be too overly noisy because in the gully the sound does echo through and there was some people over in the paddocks over there walking along calling their dog and we could hear them and you would think they were literally just behind us. And that, so that's we, a good 300 metres away. Yeah, so, so we've just got to be very noise conscious. Uh, I'm getting hungry. We need to book this pub. All right, so we've uh, just stopped into town, which is, I wouldn't even call it town. It's only very small. There's only a pub, general store, um, where you can get fuel uh, and, a, and a bit of a hot food takeaway sort of joint. Anyway, so we, we walked in there and uh, well, when we went to go book in for the pub, for the night, uh, there was a heap of bikes there. So, you know, guys that had gone up through a bit of the bottom end of the high country and stuff like that, and they're just down there having a beer. And uh, so we've booked in, and then we've gone across the road to grab something to eat. And the lady in there goes, oh, you just don't want some hamburgers, do you? And we're like, oh, yeah, hamburgers actually sound all right. Was, she goes, yeah, I was just preempting the, the riders, but they went to the pub instead. And I'm like, yeah, no worries, all right, we'll give it a go. So she finishes up these hamburgers and I said, yeah, what's the damage on that? And she goes, 28 bucks. And I went, what? For two burgers, 28 bucks. So I hope they're bloody good. They're gonna be gold bladed. They look all right, don't get me wrong, but 14 bucks a burger. I suppose it's only a small town, they've got to make, make a bit of money, or, but yeah. See how we go. That's why I call it criminal. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're all coffeeed up, we're all dressed. We're testing out some new woolen shirts that I found on a website called Hugh Charles Clothing. Uh, it's a local East Gippsland company that supports 
their local community. So we're gonna give these a whirl today and we're on our way to the Bucking Caves. We had a good night last night, it wasn't really cold. No. It's a bit misty this morning, but nothing too awful. A bit um, misty. Yeah, a little bit misty. <laughs> it's still quite foggy here this morning. One downside to the area that we're in is there's no actual normal phone reception for us because we're with Optus. Um, but we're on our way now. Our booking is for 10 o'clock, but it says to go to the visitor centre half an hour prior. So, and it's literally 30 seconds down the road. Let's go have a look. Here, here we are in the visitor centre. We're just having a look at uh, some of the memorabilia that uh, the caves have to offer, all the Buckingham yeah. Caves. Looking at this, this map here, we're situated just here at the visitor centre. So if we continue on further down the road, then we'll walk up to the cave's entrance, which is here, and then we'll go down into the caves. It's only about a 500 metre walk, so it should be pretty easy. And you can see, just by looking at this map, what the fires did, it just devastated the area. because of the lighting. I'm guessing that's the, the cave length. So we just got our tickets. The lady at the visitor centre said that because we're doing the two um, cave tours, the first one's the Royal Caves and we can actually, we've just driven up to it so we don't actually have to do the walk. Um, she was very helpful. She said that it's a lovely 17 degrees in the cave so we don't actually need to be rugged up and she said the humidity was about 90%. 90%. Yeah. Um, we've purchased a a book here of the Bucking Caves and because obviously we don't have any phone reception we've grabbed a maps of the Snowy River region and she did advise us that 
most country towns that you go to, um, Optus doesn't cover it. So that's something that we need to look into consideration now, whether or not we change our phone service to Telstra. But at the moment, it's not a big issue. Um, it's now 9.30. We've got half an hour until our tour. So we might actually get out of the car, have a look around. Um, but she said we can then drive back to where, is it the fairy caves ones are here? Yeah. Something yeah. like that, but we'll find out more. She also said too, we can take our GoPro, but we can't take the stick. Um, she said that we will understand why when we get in there, so. So apparently there's a there's a lot of delicate. Um, these what? things, whatever these things are called on there. Stalignites or stalignites or something like that. I yeah, think something called. like that, but um, we'll have a look. So they don't want you sort of waving them around or having a look because they are quite delicate. So they, if you do take your cameras in, you've got to keep them close to your body and they're happy for you to film. So mm. we'll see how we go when we get in there. And obviously too, with we're not the best at low light footage. So we'll try our best to see what type of footage we can get. Yeah, we um, but we'll have some fun while we're doing it. All right, so we're up at the first part, which is the Royal Cave. Hey, and there's, they're coming, that's all right. I want to see what sign for. There's a little, little car park. Weather's actually pretty good today. It says don't touch the formations, the oil from the skin damages them and they can easily be broken. Yeah. yeah. So Maybe it packs perms. We've got a tour three, 520 metres long. Long caves takes approximately 45 minutes to an hour. So I'm guessing that's the start of the Royal Cave up there. Mm, looks like it. Hi, little fella. Oh, shivers. I didn't even see when I come into the toilet. Yeah, yeah Royal's at 10 o'clock. Yep. Jesus. He's just grazing about. Yeah, a bit of oh, it's a mum, she's got a joey. Yeah, there's another one just behind the little trees just there. Yeah. And fairies at 11. It's quite special down there. Everything's extremely old. A couple of basic rules. Um, one really is please don't touch any of the formations. Um, fingerprints, wipe them out. Okay, they rely on water to flow over, over their surface for them to grow. Okay, and their growth rate on, on yeah. that is extremely slow. Um, about on average, a 10,000 year average is about one centimetre of growth per 100 years. So, what we're looking at down there is literally hundreds of thousands of years old, tens of millions of years old. Years in the cave. Um, no animals in there, there has never been animals in those caves. We're looking for that, no bats, no smell. Um, so, that way we can get photos too. So plenty of flash photography is down there with um, Victoria. It's going to take us about 45 minutes. We exit the hillside up on top of the hill around the corner. It's a pathway that brings you back down to the here. Or if you walked up, there's another pathway that takes you back down to the office. Then again, if you're doing a double tour, keep walking up the road and you get to the next tour. Tickets, please. Coming forward, 75 metres of man made tunnel. Watch your heads on the way down. When you get down there, it'll be a little bit dark until I get there to turn the rest of the lights on. So just wait in that first number. It's getting dark in
people? Yeah, absolutely. No, it was my, it was my foot. Oh, you nearly got over. Yeah. Just the different colours of them too. Though. Some of them are quite young, but they're sort of quite white. Oh, yeah. I sparkle. Sparkles. Yeah. It's crazy. They're microscopic crystals. Um, and they stack together quite well, hence you can see almost like larger plates of them. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we get the crystal form in here due to the high humidity and low temperatures. Which has a green flow. Yeah. Possibly one of the Possibly no older than about 780,000 years. Yeah. Um, some of the larger ones towards the end of the cave are well truly above a million years yeah. higher up on yeah. the hillside, but down, down in this section of the cave, the lower sections of the cave were actually pressed full of gravel yeah. about a million years ago. Um, and that then had to be washed out for most of the formations yeah. to grow. There's evidence that there was formations in the cave systems millions of years ago. Yeah. The caves have been reflooded and it's stripped them all out yeah. and then it's grown back again. Um, mind boggling I mean, when you get into the <laughs> geological time, um, it's very difficult to try and comprehend. Wait, did you say bacon? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, from here it looks like bacon, from where you're standing it looks like a piece of fabric. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They call it a flanker or a shell. The gorgeous strikes in it. Oh, wow. Topsoil conditions changing over thousands upon thousands of years, as you expected. Yep. Yeah. yeah. That looks amazing. Short people have the duck. <laughs> We're ducking. Are you ducking? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Little people problems. <laughs> Steps, my favourite things. <laughs> you said no up. one, said no one ever. Are you doing a barricade? Are you doing a barricade? Yes. yes. Cool. Well, so more steps. Yes. Oh joy. Oh. Straight up and straight down. Nice. <laughs> And there's no refunds on tickets. No, you're doing it. Absolutely amazing, isn't it? Oh, you really do need to look around when you're wandering through the cave system. It's, um, you, you can spend all day down here quite easily and still be enthralled at the end of the day um, and be spotting something new. 
makes your job sound a lot better. And you saw the, the bacon or hanging up. Here's the bacon, here. yeah. Here's, 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 here's the formation that's cut back. And there's the same colour. Yeah. Yeah, so the wrong way to change colour. Look at the whitey pearls on here. Um, there's so many other caves in the area that they're, that they're happy. And when they these caves. Holy dooly, I can't even crank my head enough to. <laughs> <laughs> to look up. Hopefully we've got enough lighting in here. Oh, there's yeah. enough. Uh, footage. Oh. Mm -hmm. Dizzy. Dizzy. That's the Royal Caves done. Let's go to the fairy one with lots of steps. Yeah, we just have 400 steps or something. Yeah. Have a look at this. Pretty good view. It's amazing. So the guy, our tour guide actually stated, and I, I, I talked about it earlier, but I actually got it wrong. So the way he explained it was stalactites. They're like they hold on tight to the to the uh, to the roof, so they call them stalactites. And then stalagmites is they might get to the roof. So if anyone was interested or yeah uh, on what which ones they actually were, that's what they were. So during that little tour that we just did, did you notice that lady cracked the pups because he was answer the guide was answering someone's question about earthquakes and she's piped up and she's gone there's still five more people coming before you do your little oh, speech yeah. so oh damn lady like she he was actually answering someone else's question which sort of had something to do with the caves but it had nothing to do with the tour yeah, yeah. i was like damn lady like cool your jets all right so we're making our way up to fairy cave the bloke said there's about 450 stairs. It's 400. What? I'm thinking 400. 400 sounds better. 400 sounds better, you reckon? <laughs> Less stairs. So. You'd have to be pretty fit to be the tour guide. Stop, they do multiple tours a day. Yeah, you'd have to be. So we'll see what this one entails. I don't foresee it being too much different than the other one, but we'll see what, it's, see what it shows.
I'm an artifact. He's the 450, 450. That was something. Well, bulk man of stays down, Dan. Hey. Oh, watch out for this one right here. Yeah, he gets a bit tight in spots. That's what he was talking about, the little curtain things. Oh, yeah.
it's sort of way that they have closed it off at the moment because they have big bowls and it's sort of closed the risk. But, just too many people. There's one that's broken. Yeah, it's fallen. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it is too. Well, that's the fairy caves done. Yep. A bit of the same old, same old as what we've seen in the royal caves. Not much different. They're, they're almost very close to each other. Just different rock formations. Um, fairy cave actually had some larger openings um, unlike the royal cave but much the muchness and then we found out some information on that tour that actually the reason why it's called fairy caves is because the person that discovered it his daughter was called fairy moon and she also got married she actually got married in, in um, one of the big openings so they called it fairy cave but when he the bloke who discovered the cave um, he knew that there was, you know, up to 3,000 caves in this area and, and his house or where he lived is actually called the cave house here. So he went out one day, saw a bit of um, vapor. vapor, sort of steam or vapor coming out of, out of uh, the ground. So he quickly bolted back to his house, grabbed some dynamite, went back, blew yeah. a hole in it and then uh, pretty much went down there with uh, paper, pencil and a candle and then pretty much discovered the whole thing throughout the, the day. And that was in 1913, no, I think it was? No, 1907 or Or 1907, sorry. Something like that. Yeah, we'll, we'll confirm that. But yeah, very, very interesting. Very nice to see how the, the formations happened. The tour guide was very knowledgeable as well. Adam, was his name Adam? Adam, Adam yeah. Adam um, made it very interesting, laughable. Like we actually had a really good time, yeah. even though there was so many steps. Um, the tour was cut short by 100 150 meters. meters because there's a great big boulder the size of a small car that they feel is going to come down and break. So we could only get up to a certain point and then we had to come back the way that we came and there's a lot of stairs going up. So that's my gym <laughs> workout for the year. Um, but we're on our way back to the visitor information center now because Rob spotted a, like a dry bone vest. Yeah. that we actually thought was quite cheap and it's supporting the local community so we figured we'll buy one from here i think it was about 190 dollars yeah. for this vest and all their proceeds goes back into parks victoria anyway so yeah. it's like we're doing our little bit so well the adam the tour guide for the two caves is actually parks victoria so mm. and the whole area just around here around the 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 caves is owned or owned and operated by Parks Victoria so kudos to you guys you've done a really good mm. job I reckon um, the area is absolutely beautiful um, keep up the good work Parks Victoria yeah so no it's been quite enjoyable then we're going to go back to the van have a bit of a light bite to eat and munch on all the goodies that I brought to Take bring it up and then we're going to have a look at this map also that we've brought and I'll go through take some photos of the book that we brought and plan our day for tomorrow have a few drinks because we didn't really have much last night because nah. we were exhausted from the six hour drive out here um and then yeah just relax get the fire going i don't think we'll be able to get much drone shots today nah, it's not today quite tomorrow's, cloudy. Gonna, tomorrow's gonna be a better day it's supposed to be uh 22 degrees and sunny tomorrow so i'll be able to get some really good drone footage then so i thought i'd add to we actually did go to the pub for dinner last night after when we ate those burgers at three o'clock in the afternoon, which weren't that great, considering we paid $14 for them. Each? Yeah, um, and then we were in and out of the pub within literally half an hour, because we were still so full from lunch that we didn't really eat much. And then I'd actually left some of my dinner on my plate and was having a look at some of the photos around that's inside the pub. Um, and then I went back to the table to maybe have another pick at my fish and they'd already cleared my plate. So, luckily, I was Lucky we were full. <laughs> so, but let's go get this vest and then he can showcase it off later. What's for lunch, dearie? Uh, Ritz. <clears throat> Bit of crispy bacon and caramelised onion dip. Cheese, tomato, and cabana. How's yum, your yum. new vest? Comfortable. What was the brand, do you remember? Uh, did, did you read? Didgeridunas. What is that? Yeah, dig. Didgeridunas or? Didgeridunas. Didgeridunas. Yeah. I've got my Hugh Charles shirt back on. 
didn't wear it at the caves because the humidity in there and they said it was quite warm enough. So I'm gonna give another test run now. But just sitting here, I'm quite warm. I, on the reviews I read on the site, it said to um, go a size up so that way you can wear something underneath. I was get Rob to hold it. So I'm normally a 12 to 14, so I got the 16 and it's, it's quite big and it covers your bum. So when you sit down, mm -hmm. it still covers, but yeah, it's quite big. I gave it a wash before we came up here. The arm, oh, got rips on me. I can't take me anywhere slopping. The sleeves are quite long, so if it is cold, you can put your thumbs in and rug up. So we'll see how it goes later today. I've seen other um, reviews on their website um, and on their Facebook group um, that says that they don't guarantee they're waterproof, but some people have said that they've been out in the rain and they've not gotten wet and they've not felt it. So we'll see, see how this goes tonight. But for now, we're gonna enjoy some music, some drinks and food. Food. It's like the poor people's gourmet. Nothing beats cabana cheese, pickies and dip. They're bloody good gourmet. Yeah, and with scenic views like this. Oh God, what are they? Some type of weird bird. Mm. Rob wants to go look at the nags. I thought one nag was enough. Yeah, but you get over listening to that one all the time. <laughs> Apparently they're friendly. Weird looking birds. I'd laugh if it walks off. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, nah, I don't want to talk to you. No goodies. Hey, hello. Did you bring any goodies for me? Hey? What they do is eat. Here's something I can teach you. Alright, you mm -hmm. ready? Mm -hmm. So, down on the inside of the legs. Yep. See all those little yellow dots? Yep. They're called botfly eggs. Oh, really? And you have to have a special comb to actually comb those off. I was forever combing those off my horses botfly back in the day. Eggs. Okay. Yeah. So there's a little, there's a little milly knowledge. Yeah. Something that I know. And this lovely horse is a gelding. For a pat. What's the matter? You're too short to reach him to pat. I am. You're looking. Where's his friend? Uh, he's just Wasn't there another one? Yeah, another one. Over there. Oh, yeah, there's his friend. He's had enough of us. Yeah. Very elegant beast, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Elegant. If you're looking at the wrong end to be elegant. True. <laughs> oh dear. They've got a communal fire pit up here. And when we came to stay, oh, nearly fell down. They advise us not to park the caravan underneath this tree because apparently they say it gets really, really wet. Well, it's, it's got a bit of a lean on it and there's a fair bit of moisture on the ground near the... Um, I was talking to Peter last night about the veggie patch and he said it's more of a weed patch. Oh, his veggie patch is a weed patch. Yeah. 
It's an interesting looking tree. It's quite spiky. Yeah. You wouldn't, want to, oh, you wouldn't want to get tangled up in it, would you? Well, apparently the seeds that these things have are about this big. And when they let go, you don't want to be anywhere near it when it drops from the tree. Mm. So it can do a fair bit of damage. It is very prickly. Some type of critter living there. Those little spiders everywhere. <clears throat> There's the a weed garden over there. Yeah. So. And what do they call this? The milking. Yeah, it was like a. Uh, the lady who used to own this property years ago, who is, I think it was the grandmother of the the bloke who lives over that side there. So, the bloke who lives over there, his grandmother or his mother-in-law used to own this, this property. So Peter and Kirsty bought it off them and she was still milking cows in here at the age of 90. So. Oh, they've actually got a COVID check-in sign here. So there is power and water. <clears throat> Fire extinguisher. We've got our shower hooked up there. <clears throat> but we don't need power. We're pretty self-sufficient. It bins if needed. Don't really need water, but... No, it's only for the shower. <laughs> oh, you're still recording. <laughs> So my recommendation is if we had side pockets in here, I could be sitting here now tucking my hands into my pockets and I'd be toasty warm. My hands would be anyway, except for because the sleeves are extra long, you can put your arm through it and hook your thumb um, and keep nice and warm that way. But we don't really have a breeze here. I don't think it's overly cold as yet and we've got the fire. Um, but yeah, so far so good. Well worth the money. The fabric feels amazing, especially that it's had a wash. It does have some maize hair on it, which seems to be over all of our stuff. So that that's an ever-going issue, really. But yeah, so far so good. I'm excited to try some of the other shirt styles, especially the button that go all the way down and the other colours.